Happy Thanksgiving to everybody watching this week. Have a special topic this week, Thanksgiving postcards. I'm going to go over some of those, talk about the pricing, what I think of them, and some of the, you know, probably talk about some of the other holiday cards. But also I have 21 cards sold that I'll go through the whole video. I'll space them out on what cards so you can see the variety. And I have a postcard term I found that I haven't used. And I get a lot of uh, people with emails and messages. Are there checklists for postcards? I'm going to talk about checklists. There's checklists for certain series of postcards. And then I got about three or four viewer comments that I'll stir some discussion about here. But let's go ahead and get started on what's sold. So yesterday was kind of a slow day, <clears throat> but then it picked up. I sold 20 cards on eBay, and one guy came in and bought 10 cards. And I put those to the side so we can go through those separately to see what the person's buying. What variety is he looking for one thing? It's kind of interesting what he picked out. He picked out from all the boxes, from number, box number one that I put together years ago, all the way to the newest box uh, just in the last couple weeks. So he was going through the store for a while. Then I finally sold one on Etsy. I didn't sell anything on Etsy yesterday. And then I finally sold one card. And then I had a sale on HIP. HIP is kind of picking up. It's been staying steady. Where where I'd like to be more, but at least I'm selling some more on there. So that was a total of 21 cards. And that's about a little over like $101 in sales in postcards. And I did sell two photos. I, I count on them as postcards, but I'll talk about the photos, what I'm doing with the ship photos. But let's go ahead and get into it. The first card I sold is on HIP. It's mountains, frozen river. It's called Red Rock Crossing. Some kind of reflection. But this one sold on HIP. And if you notice on the back here, it's got those lines going through it. That's part of the card on there. And it's got some fancy rope-like thing on the postcard on there. So they did a little, some company not for sure Robin company uh, did that one but that sold between four and five dollars on hip that was the only card that sold on hip <clears throat> now the next card that sold was on eBay and it was one of the ships it's the USS Albany CQ 10 just a chrome card nice and straight four to five dollars I sold this card in one of the last videos it's the Coast Guard boat again Duh. Kuznick, I think how you say it, a Kuznick on there. It does have a little yellowing on the back from aging, but it, this is one of those solid stock cards. But the Coast Guard boats do pretty well, along with the airplanes and stuff, with the ships, four to five dollars. Then I sold a weird building, Oakland, California. It's on Broadway and 14th Street. Buildings. Someone goes down there or whatever unposted chrome card it's got a little shadowy figure of the same thing uh golden gate bridge in there that, that's pretty neat but chrome card four to five dollars i sold this dude i remember listing this dude and i'm sorry to see him go it's a squirrel in a tree i sold a squirrel in a tree and what is the name on the card squirrel who knew <laughs> so so long buddy but four to five dollars going to a new home now if you haven't been looking into these i did a, on some of the videos a long time ago i buy trade card packages they call them wax packs or whatever but when i see them i can get them real cheap in a big lot i'll post them like a postcard and this i sold this the rugrats this is from, I don't know, the 80s, I think. Nin uh, 90, 1997. Just a collection. I got about maybe 20 of these in there. They go right in the envelope. Uh, just put it like a postcard in the envelope. It'll go with a stamp uh, right out the door. You can't use a eBay standard envelope with it. But you might be able to. I don't know if the category's in there yet, but... 
I usually I've been mailing them with a stamp and I just go right out and I ship one to a friend and it wasn't too thick they bend pretty good but look for those and if you can find some of the older ones you know they'll sell between four and eight dollars and I've sold uh, some for even more than that <clears throat> next card that sold on eBay is a Barrage Residence Redlands California this is an older divided back card you can see the, the browning on it but that's just the residence someone knows about it four to five dollars let me do another card here <clears throat> and then I'll get into Thanksgiving postcards and my opinions on those this is a globe it's a white border card yep out of a globe in the news building in New York that's a globe so I sold a squirrel, I sold a gold, and I sold some trade cards. Let me just go ahead and do one more here. That way I can keep up and get it uh, almost right into the bigger order. Now this card here is a little different, and it's on. It's kind of a vignette postcard with the picture that rolls right into the writing tab. This is uh, an undivided back card. Doesn't say when it was posted or any dates on there, but a vignette card kind of rolls in to the writing tab and we do have a video on how to identify vignette postcards do they bring more money you know we put vignette in the title people i don't know if people are searching for it or whatever but this is the i call them insets also kind of like in there but that's a neat, neat little card home of romana I'm not sure who romana is there was no more information but it's got a writing tab undivided there's no line so it's an undivided back <clears throat> doesn't mean it's worth a lot more money it's just whoever wants the subject place time or whatever and, and condition to a point this one's got a little curl on the corners and stuff but not like not like baseball cards and sports cards condition on the corners and stuff are not that big a deal or what's on the back is important like on baseball cards but four to five dollars okay now let's get into Thanksgiving postcards. I see these go all over the place on pricing. I see people buy them for huge amounts of money and they end up not selling as well. But we're gonna go through the pricing here just so you can make up your mind what you wanna do with them. But what are Thanksgiving postcards? They're part of the holiday, the Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, Halloween. Uh, those are probably one of the best and St. Patrick's Day there are so many made there's so many varieties and there's they're just all over the place so let me give you the definition right here of the Thanksgiving postcards that I came up with Thanksgiving Day it's an annual national holiday in the United States and Canada celebrating the harvest and other blessings of the past year so if you're not from the united states or canada this might be a little weird to you but it's just a holiday we family gets together and uh celebrate the harvest and the blessings it goes way back to the pilgrim days when they used to do it with the indians there is an abundance of thanksgiving postcards out there but it's a good type of card to start collecting and understanding postcards because they're really nice to have in a collection some of them are really cool and I'm going to show you here in a second uh, the two I have I don't collect a lot of holiday postcards so I don't have a lot of them <clears throat> but I, I do pick them up when I see them at one auction I picked up a whole album one time but they don't sell that well and people think well I'll put them up during the year of Thanksgiving it really doesn't matter collectibles will sell all year long it might get a little push during the holidays but if they're nice and you keywords ship in a day price to sell it'll sell but most of the thanksgiving postcards they can depict pilgrims indians and sometimes some patriotic subjects in there as well they can also be highly embossed and detailed i've seen some really really neat uh holiday or Thanksgiving postcards with the turkey feathers and stuff like that. I don't know how it went through the mail. I think they were just decorated. <clears throat> but the highly embossed ones with the deep emboss <clears throat> on there are really nice. Now I got two examples of the cards here. The first one 
I thought I picked up because I just like the way it is. It's got everything about Thanksgiving in there. So I think that's a church back there in the back. It's got the turkey. It's got a pumpkin, which is around the harvest time. And it's got the, the chef and it's got the cutlery. So he's going to walk home. She's going to cook them and then she's going to uh, eat them and bring it to the church for leftovers. But this is a Tux postcard. It is embossed. I don't know if you can see the embossed part of it in there. A little bit, yeah. But it's not a real heavy embossed. The turkey's embossed, the pumpkin, the edges of the chef, and the cutlery. But I thought that was one of the neater cards. So I think I paid maybe 50 cents for this. I can't remember. I, I come to mind it was some mall or something. But that's one of the Thanksgiving postcards that I have. And the next one is just your plain thanksgiving greetings card and this is just a divided back and i'm not for sure who made it but it was uh made in germany so that's your higher quality cards the, the turkey's embossed i don't know if you can see the emboss on there let me see if i yeah you can see a little bit of emboss on there this was actually postmarked in 1907. now just because it's 1907 doesn't mean it's worth 1907 dollars yeah it's over 100 years old but there's billions out there. There's over 9 million postcards listed on eBay. Uh, you gotta, it's the subject. Where's made? It could be who it's from. It could be the cancel. It could be the stamp if you look at stamps. But put this one right here, I think I just got in, an, in a lot of cards for like 10 cents or something. But that's just a plain turkey on there. But it, most of them are going to say Thanksgiving greetings. Very generic on there. But those are the only two um, cards that I have in my collection for Thanksgiving. Let's go out and look at the pricing. And I've been doing this and people like it because it kind of shows them how I do it. It also gives you an idea that I'm just not pricing off the top of my head and come up with some price. I want to let you make your own opinion where you want to put them. Now you can price your cards wherever you want and they could sell. Or you could go as low as you want and they could sell. But there's a pre perceived value if you price them too low. Number one, it's perceived to you like, I spent all this time listing these postcards and I'm only getting 50 cents out of this thing. Or you price them real high and you sell one a week. So you gotta find that medium where you're getting the money for your time, your supplies, to grow your business, to go out and find them. Uh, you're learning. And they're, so you're getting your money back for that, plus a little bit more to invest in your business. Also, not too high where they don't sell. So you, there's a medium in there, and that's kind of like what comping is. So any special cards, that's why I always put them to the side, because I might get a few extra dollars. I might not be at the top. But I find that uh, researching postcards sometimes can take you down a rabbit hole and end up with nothing. So just be careful on how much time you spend on it and watch your prices. Yeah, there's people out there doing dollar auctions and dollar shipping. They've been doing it for years. It's, it's their model. It works. But they got thousands, tens of thousands of cards up there. So they're doing volume. Then there's other people come in and put a $4 card up for $60 because it's, a, it's 100 years old. It's going to sit there. Most of the time, statistically speaking, it will sit there. But then once in a while, one will sell. And that's the price everybody starts going for and saying that's you know that's the best price for that card so don't just don't follow her do do kind of what i'm doing here to look at the price and make a educated decision now if you need a little bit more out of it push the limit see what the market will bear give it 30 60 90 six months and if it doesn't sell go back and bring it down a little or bring it up if you see them selling go and find another one bring it up it's it, that's what the, what's so neat about postcards is you can experiment if you want and try to get what you can out of it. But let's look at the, I went out and I grabbed the solds high and low. So let's look at the highs first. So here's a postcard of a turkey and uh, some guy on there. And it's a German Thanksgiving postcard. Uh, see how they put Germany in there? So Germany before the war before we bombed all the factories basically uh did the postcards and they're very high quality then it came over to america 
in Britain and stuff, and they were not as good a quality here in America as they were in the German days. So if you see Germany on the back of postcards, uh, you want to take a look at that, but a lot of them will be from Germany. So $60.99, so $61 plus $5 shipping for that card. Not a bad deal. The next one's a turkey and some kind of moon. $49.75. And that's a Schmucker, uh, I can't say the name Schmucker postcard, so that's an artist uh, type sign postcard or whatever that might have some special things. So that's what you want to look at. And then Vintage Thanksgiving postcard F.A. Owens is another one. So that's another artist type name that you want to key in on. Find some books, do some research about the artists of some of these cards and see what they're pulling here. Look at that right there. There's 60. 50 and 50 there's hundred and sixty dollars in three postcards now that's worth the time to research if you're in that model so now let's go back and look at the low end of the solds and this is for the last 90 days right off of ebay just like everybody does nothing special boom dollar fifty dollar fifty dollar fifty dollar fifty high low what makes a difference it looks like here the artist so Boom, I'm going to sit there and, okay, i, I got to figure out what these two guys are. I'm going to go see if I can, next time I look through a box of cards and it says Thanksgiving, if I find an Owens, you know, is that the right one? What other artists out there uh, do this? And some of the people that work in that artist part of the postcard collecting and selling can tell you out right off the top of your head what sells and what these people are. Uh, I'm not in all of the artist stuff as much as some of those other collectors are i'm more like i said divided back and down is my niche but i am getting into the cancellations and some of that and i'll probably hit on a little bit more artist stuff because i might be missing a few dollars here but i can't do it all i can't look at everything um pretty successful what i'm doing at the moment i'm adding on to it a little bit by little so you just pick up what you can now there are some artists i know that i'll go out and if i see them i'll i'll pull the cards uh, on there and stuff like that but I'm not as deep into that as I am some of the other stuff but you can't do it all but you can get there you got to start somewhere list that postcard but look at that dollar fifty four times in a row that's five dollars postcards over there doesn't look like a really anything special with those postcards and then you look at the uh, the highs hundred and sixty dollars the range is just crazy sometimes Let's go out and see what these people are listing these things for. What is the competition listing these things for? So here's a 19 vintage 1900s holiday Thanksgiving 1914 extremely rare postcard. Right off the bat, I would not even look at this listing. There's three things here that just I, I it just tells me right there. I really don't want to look at the seller uh, on there. The word vintage. I don't even know if eBay does anything with that. Anything with the 1914, it's going to be vintage. Number two, rare. Using the word rare. They tell you not to do that. And the last thing is the price. There's nothing that jumps out of that picture right there that says that's a $250 postcard. Now, maybe if I look into it, some artist or whatever, maybe there is something there. But you know what? Just those three things, I'm not even going to look at that. That's me as a buyer. The next one listed high, 1908 Thanksgiving Greening Postcard and Benjamin Franklin One Cent Stamp, number 26. So this might be something with the Benjamin Stamp. I don't do stamps. I'm nothing against stamps, but I don't know if I would put that in a title, but I don't know stamps. Maybe that means something there. But that's a nice little title, 1908 Thanksgiving Postcard. Uh, first five keywords in there, postcard, greening. It's a turkey. Is it worth $125? I wouldn't look at that one either. I'm not, it's, there's no offer I could send that guy that would even, we'd be too far apart unless there's something there. But a Benjamin Franklin one cent stamp, I mean, I could probably look at, let me see what this one has on here. There's a George Washington one cent stamp, sold between four and five dollars. So what makes that different? That's what you want to look at. <clears throat> then the other one here, 1907 to 1912, Wild Turkey, Tom. Pardon USA Thanksgiving Home Greetings Feast Postcard. 
So he's got a lot of key words in there <clears throat> that probably hit the searches and stuff. 1907 to 1912. You could say little C circa 1907. It'll go in there. <clears throat> Pardon, USA, Thanksgiving, home, greetings, feast, postcard. So that's one of those key word titles. <clears throat> it doesn't really read English, but it will hit the terms. But will it, is it worth a turkey with some woods there? What makes that a $100 postcard? I probably wouldn't look at that one either as a buyer because I would be too far apart. I don't collect Thanksgiving postcards and nothing jumps out to me in the picture to say that's $100 I would want to spend. But that's me as a buyer. So that's the listed high. Now let's go over and look at the listed low. 99 cents, $1.75, $1.75. $1.75. Dave, uh, let me see if there's any best. 99 cents or best offer. 99 cents or best offer. Do I have to say anything else? There's nothing left there. There's not enough there, no meat on the bone in the first place for your time for that, unless you have it as an auction. And 75 shipping, that, that'll cover the shipping give you 20 cents more, but you ask for best offer for 99 cent postcard? I don't do put best offer on four to eight, ten dollar postcards. Number one, there's too much going back and forth. There's not enough room or meat on the bone, they call it, for me to go back and forth and spend the time. Now, if someone wanted to send me an offer, I've done that to an email and I just say, yeah, I'll do that. Very rarely. Now my higher cards, I might put best offer on because I went high and I want to see what the market would bear. I'm testing the market. That's about the only time I use best offer. Now there's one guy who was on another live channel. He was talking and I think he hit it right on the nail what I always thought, but I didn't really know how to say it, I think. But he said, if you put best offer on things, people already know that you'll ask for a lower price. So why put best offer on it? Just put the lower price. Um, but I don't get into a lot of the sometimes the going back and forth with the lower end stuff and because time is money but 99 cents and best offer uh, it's confusing but those are the cards so you got $250 you got 99 cents so it's all the work so you want to do your homework price it what you think you want or know that you need bottom line and go up from there never go down that bottom line is what you need to make and if you can't make that don't list it sell it somewhere else or do something where there's lower fees but that's your bottom line that's your profit that's your cash flow that's your bottom line and if you go up you put more at the top line and more at the bottom line and you still got the same expenses that's how I think about these cards and you're gonna see that in the next two cards I sold they're not really cards they're photos of the ships and what I'm doing to test the market on those because uh, I'm not a photo guy. I, I haven't put photos up that much before. So I'm kind of seeing what people are, are buying for those. Because they're all over the board like this. But that's Thanksgiving postcards. Holiday postcards, you're going to see tons of them out there. Don't get trapped in the greetings, birthday greetings, birthing, Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, St. Patrick's Day, joy. There's different ways to say Christmas. There's a lot of them out there. You got to have very special cards to make the bigger dollars on them. I don't even list them anymore. Any greeting cards, very rarely, maybe I'll put one up here, slips through or whatever like that. But in the beginning, I put a lot up there. I track, like I said, I tracked for a, a while all the different types of cards that sold. And greeting cards was not one of them. Birthday greetings, even if it has 1900 on there, 1907 in Ben Franklin stamp, I don't think they don't move for me. Just like Continental cards don't move for me. Maybe someone else is very successful with those, but that's what my statistics and my data tells me. Just because I like turkeys on a card doesn't mean I'm going to go out and buy them because they don't move for me. Because my data tells me that, not what I feel, it's what my data says. And that data will drive your business to be successful, not what you think. Thanksgiving postcards. Who knew? And happy Thanksgiving to everybody again. So now let me get into, finish up what I sold on eBay and Etsy, and then we'll go through uh, 
the term checklist. I've had a lot of questions about are there checklists out there for series postcards and I, I'll show you what I found. So the next next cards which are not really cards the Ingo eBay standard envelope they're photographs. With this naval ship haul I got a couple big boxes of these photographs of ships and these are actual photographs and what the neatest thing in the world is you know what that ship is? That's Oklahoma City. Wow he knows his ship. Nope. They put a note with the date of the year and everything nice and cataloged on the back of the photo. These are a dream to list. And guess what? They go in a sleeve and they go in an envelope. They fit right in there with a stamp out the door. Photos. So I got a lot of these. So I'm testing. Right now I'm testing the market to see what I do with these because they're the bigger ones I found are uh, 8x10s I could probably get 20 25 dollars for these but these are smaller 3x5 and stuff so right now I'm, I got 855 on them uh, free shipping and they're selling maybe I'll creep up a little bit more because they're kind of a one-of-a-kind thing to a point but I don't see a lot of them at this size out there so I'm kind of testing the market I'm putting up a couple here I, like I put 20 up I put these up yesterday 20 of them just to see what they would do and two of them sold in 24 hours so maybe I got a nice little thing but I don't have a lot into these so and I don't do a lot of these so I want them to move but that's the Oklahoma City the next one <coughs> Topeka it's got the little note on the back and it has 1960s uh, SS, USS Topeka CLA-8 just another 3x5 card and that'll go too so I made $17 on two photos I listed yesterday and I don't have hardly any I basically don't have anything in these uh, with that big lot there are so many cards and the shipping is 55 cents so that that so far I'm pretty happy with that I might go up a little bit to see because photos are a little unique I know some people put them up for $50 but I don't want stuff to sit I want it to move now the card I sold on hip entrance and flowers Highland Park Pittsburgh Pennsylvania it's a park <laughs> with flowers I've sold a couple parks this week divided back card posted um, 1912 on there that's an older card but look at the edges on here you can see it's a little damaged you put that on a sports card god they wouldn't they, they go nuts probably I don't do sports cards but the corners and stuff like that don't and what's on the back not as important what the subject is you know on there so four to five dollars now let me go into the term today checklist now these companies that did postcards like uh, Tyke and stuff like that the Union 76 series uh, there's a whole checklist after a bunch of checklists that'll show you how what years they were what this is and stuff like that and you can check off and collect them just like you do with action figures or trading cards on the back of some of the cards they would have the checklist of all the cards and which ones you need for your collection a lot of collectors like to try to get them all are there checklists for postcards I get a lot of questions and yes there is and what is a checklist so I got a definition for you checklist complete listing of all the cards within a certain set series mostly set subject or publisher so that's a complete listings of all the cards within a certain set subject or publisher checklists usually give the title and serial number if any if any to identify the cards but also could have descriptions of the picture side so each one's a little different it depends who puts it together and what company it is some companies reused uh serial numbers you know they had just had a gentleman's agreement when I talked about that before on there but just think you got 20 cards and you found a checklist and you need one more if you sold them individually you make a hundred dollars if you sold them as a set and had them all you make five hundred dollars what would you do I'd go out and buy that other last card I need singly so the people that sell them singly make out and the people that sell sets make out so and a checklist will help you know what you need and and plus it educates you on how many are out there and what you need to look for when you look through the boxes this is how you educate yourself on postcards 
So checklists, they're all over the internet. Just got a postcard checklist out there. But this one right here is for Kurt Teich large letter postcards from 1933 to 1956. So these are all the serial numbers of the cards that Kurt Teich did for large letter between those years. Very simple. Anybody can do a checklist. Checklist. Who knew? All right, I'm going to get into now the person that bought 10 cards on eBay in one order. And let's see what he was looking at and see if there's a variety, some kind of theme on there. The last video I did, we had the same type of thing. Now, the first card that he was the conservatory in Harrisburg, Hyacin uh, Field there. It's just a divided back card, but it's in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, $4 to $5. Next one is the Capitol, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And this was posted in 1914. Divided back card, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Two for Harrisburg and Pennsylvania. Next one is Harrisburg State Capitol, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Newer chrome card. You can see it glisten a little bit. And this was posted in 1967 on there, $4 to $5. Now he did get a volume discount of 15% because he bought 10 cards over a certain amount you get a volume discount so uh, under. But also um, I'm not going to be paying as much shipping for each one. So I'm not going to pay $5 shipping, I'm going to pay like $3. Independent Halls, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This looks like a real photo postcard but it's not. It, it's actually a chrome card that's been reproduced. Next one is Lakeside Hotel, Eaglesmere, Pennsylvania. Lovely, loveliest spot in Pennsylvania. There's the hotel right up there on some kind of mountain. But it's a posted card, and this was posted in 1955. I used to see him all the time when I traveled to Pennsylvania. I stayed in a hotel room, and I can look out the window and I see Penn standing up in Philadelphia. That's the Penn thing on top of the building. It's not Franklin, it's Penn. And 1943, and that's a linen card for William Penn, four to five dollars. All Pennsylvania cards. This one, <laughs> I've got. I was putting. I, I don't put these up anymore. I was putting a lot on here. Betsy Ross House. I think it's in South Philly, or Archery Down. We walked over there one time, but look at that corner right up there. See that? And they still bought it on there. And this was posted. It was not posted. But it looks like it was going to be. It's got a stamp on it. Yes, it was canceled, but I can't tell what it is. But this is a white border card of the Betsy Ross House. Pennsylvania. William Penn's Mansion, Fairmont Park. That's him right there. See him? Right there. Pennsylvania. Four to five dollars. This was a different one. This was a monument. Penn Treaty Monument, Philadelphia. I don't see too many of these a lot. But there's an Indian right down some kind of treaty and a monument. I don't even really know where that is. Uh, what park or something. I wonder if it's still there. Uh, placed by the Penn Society, AD 1827, to mark the site of the Great Elm Tree. Huh, might be some history to look up there. But $4 to $5. On the last one he bought was this one. Tame pigeons flying in Capitol Park. That's what it says on the card. Believe me, it does. Tame pigeons flying in Capitol Park, Harrisburg. Where's the pigeons? Oh, there's the pigeons. There's some guy over here, and there's the tame pigeons. So, how do you tame a pigeon? Do you play fetch with them? Maybe they're, they come back to you? Tame pigeons in Capitol Park, Harrisburg. So this guy bought $40 worth of cards, basically $50 worth of postcards, and they're Harrisburg and Pennsylvania and Philadelphia. Right there. Who knew? So those are all the cards I sold over $100 worth of sales, and there are 21 cards. And those will get packed up. Now this will get packed up all together in one envelope. What I do is I sleeve each of the cards, they go in an envelope, I put in a little poly bag to keep the moisture, I wrap it in cardboard, and I put masking tape on it, and then I put it in a poly mailer, and I do a first class bag. It'll be about three ounces. It'll go out. 
The other cards will all, will all go uh, either a stamp and a label with Etsy and, and HIP and uh, photos and stuff. And the other ones will be eBay standard envelope. Now let's get to the favorite part. Viewer comments. And boy are the comments starting to come in more and more, which I like. It, uh, interesting on some of the questions. So the first comment was, some of the things that eBay is doing is confusing. I've been selling postcards on eBay for 20 years. Also, I've been selling postcards at stamp and postcards shows for over 30 years. Those are the people we need to talk to. Those are the people with the knowledge. We want to get that knowledge. So uh, thanks for sharing this so far. The way eBay is doing, what eBay is doing is completely different than the way you sell postcards at shows. Absolutely. I don't sell at shows, but I've talked to other people that do. and the changes they've made uh, just doesn't flow. I don't know if they ever talked to any postcard sellers or collectors on what people look for. Um, postcard people are researchers. They're detailed. Um, stuff like that. But I agree with you 100%. But I really appreciate you commenting and being here. Someone with the knowledge that you have, 30 years experience or more, can really help us out with some of the questions we have. And maybe we can help you out with some of the newest things that they're doing on eBay to help you out. So, thanks for all the comments. The next viewer comment was, so this is when I was going through all the cards, that 500 card lot, just put them in three stacks. Just people wanted me to do a first pass through a box of cards and how I sort them, whatever. So this comment came in. Common cards are fine with me. I want a full store of commons. So when I list the good ones, people will buy commons as a filler. I am tired of seeing, but I am tired of seeing Washington D.C., Niagara Falls, Yellowstone, and Mount Vernon. Though, absolutely, there is a lot of those. So once you get into postcards, listen to what some of these people say uh, about these D.C. cards. If you want to put them in your store, it's fine. I do sell those cards, but I I kind of had to watch because there's so many of them out there uh, on there. But some people will pick them up, but they are slow sellers. But on the last video, I had one person saying, well, those, no, I wouldn't list any of those cards. And this guy comes back and says, I will, common cards are fine to me. That's what I like about postcards. There's so many different models you can do. Some people go high-end cards. Some people go middle of the road, some bottom. Some people just novelty. Some people just want flag cards. Uh, just different things like that. There's so much you can do with it. So uh, not for sure if you can be different than anybody else because it's been around for so long but you can certainly make it interesting uh, and valuable to people but thanks for the comment comment cards are fine with me too I always tell people I dumpster dive for a chrome card <laughs> in the reseller world I would dumpster dive for a chrome card um, and now the next question uh, is about the naval ship hall I have a playlist up in the videos just about the 20,000 cards. I thought there were 20,000 cards when I first got them. There's a, a close to 100,000 postcards with that naval ship haul, but it kind of uh, goes through on how I got it and then how I organized it. And this question is, how is the progress with the naval postcard haul? When I hit 180 days, which six months, I'm going to do another video on where I'm at in six months. And what that does for me I'll be able to detail on all the pieces I've done, my original plan, and also give you guys a gauge. If you buy this many postcards, how long would it take you to do? Now remember, I'm set up totally to do this. I wouldn't recommend someone just starting with postcards buying that many postcards. Uh, because you're going to have to redo a lot of your processes as you go through and learn. Um, put up your first thousand postcards, you'll learn the shipping, you'll, you'll do all that stuff. and make mistakes and get your scanners get your inventory in place then you can handle it. I was in the perfect situation to bring those into my processes because I was set up to do that um, it, it worked out very well I am so how was the progress I'm about 65% done it's a lot of rinse and repeat but there was also a lot of quantity so I might have one card with 500 postcards. So it's one listing with a quantity of 500. It took me more time to count the cards than it is to actually create the listing. 
um, on there. So it's coming along just fine. I am selling them. They sprinkle in, as you saw the day, the photos and stuff. They're not the biggest seller I have. They just kept, they just like melded into my process and my selling uh, stuff here. It's going to take a long time to sell that many cards, but I learned a lot. I learned about a little bit more about the inventory, but pulling the cards is the breeze the way I got it set up, and you'll see that when I hit 180 days on there. On some of the other videos where I pulled the orders and stuff, you'll see the boxes I put together. I finally got my dividers in after six weeks, so now everything looks nice and neat, and it's easier to work with. But I had to redo a couple things because of the quantity thing. It, it changed up a few things. I wasn't used to having you know, a thousand of one card. So do I put them all in the box to take out space? So in my closet, I got about 10 boxes in the closet. Uh, so maybe I'll put 300 in the boxes here and I put a note, uh, one of those dividers says more in closet and I label them in the closet. So when I get down to, to the bottom there, uh, I can just go to the closet and add more to the quantity instead of having to put more shelves in. But I'm doing well, it was a good buy. Uh, would I do it again? Absolutely. Now, packing that many cards, you know, like I had this order today for 10 cards, that's not going to fit in to the, the best envelope. The envelope and go through the eBay standard envelope. It's just too thick and too much, you know, uh, too much in there for that. So what do I do? Well, if you check this video out, it's I think it's packed and mailing postcards. It's, now it's an older video, so I've probably got a stamp and a label on it, not the eBay standard envelope. But it does show how I will wrap these up and put them in a uh, poly bubble mailer, uh, Craft Zero. So go ahead and watch that video, and uh, I think it'll help you out. That's all I got today. Thanks for watching.